how can I fit walking into my busy life so it doesn't feel like a chore or exercise? Well, I have a desk job, so I can't do much walking in my daily routine. Well, these are some of the questions I will answer today by turning to some of my own research studies. Hi, I'm Dr. Sabali Powell, Professor in Bariatric Medicine. I do research in the areas of nutrition, fitness, and chronic disease. When it comes to healthy lifestyle changes, my philosophy has always been about making things as easy as possible, so the chances of sticking to it are higher. By making things easy, I find it much simpler to gradually integrate a lifestyle change as a daily habit so that it becomes an automatic practice that I don't think about it anymore, like brushing your teeth, for example. The modern challenge of today is the balance of sanitary habits with active choices. The average person does around 4,000 steps a day, and this is because in today's fast-paced world, many people find themselves caught in a cycle of sedentary behavior. The typical routine is to wake up, get in your car, go to work, sit at the office, repeat the journey home, eat dinner, sit on the sofa to watch TV or scroll through social media, or even play video games, and then go to sleep, and then repeat again the next day. And some of us even may fit in a gym session in there occasionally. According to this graph, if we are chair-bound all day, we barely burn calories compared to those who stand or do strenuous work. You burn 500 calories sitting all day and up to 2,500 by moving around. So any kind of movement during the day can have to a lot of calories burned in a week or a year. Although this type of sedentary behavior impacts calories burned during the day, research has shown that this typical type of non-movement of the body, like being chair-bound, goes way beyond the calorie burn. It is extremely detrimental to one's metabolic health. If you look at this diagram, doing a typical desk job with a mental activity, for example, causes sleep dysfunctions and significantly increases glycemic instability, or in other words, blood sugar imbalances. This leads to an increase in the desire to eat because the hunger hormones, ghrelin, is activated, leading to eating more and weight gain. And any type of reclining, seated, or lying position that causes a lack of movement for extended periods can have significant effects on sleep, hormones, appetite, and hence weight gain and metabolic diseases such as heart disease. You can see in this diagram on the left shows that those doing a couple of thousand steps per day have the highest incidence of all cause mortality, which means dying of any diseases such as cancer, diabetes, hypertension, and obesity, and also have the highest risk of cardiovascular disease which is shown on the graph in right. Numerous studies have found health benefits of physical activity, such as walking about 10,000 steps per day to improve psychological well-being and decrease risk factors associated with chronic diseases. So you can see by this diagram that an extra 1,000 steps taken daily can decrease your all-cause mortality by 15%, and just by an extra 500 steps can decrease cardiovascular death by 7%. You can significantly reduce all cause mortality by gradually increasing your step count to about 10,000 steps daily. And this is why, to maintain good health and reduce the risk of chronic disease, most public health guidelines recommend that adults participate in 30 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity on most days of the week. However, I believe these recommendations do not mean anything to most of us. Many people actually find it quite confusing. For example, what if you were doing 2,000 steps a day because you had a desk job, and it means that doing an extra 30 minutes or 3,000 extra steps a day, or according to the recommendations, it would bring it up to 5,000 steps per day. Yes, this is definitely better than 2,000 steps, but not enough for good health. And this is the exact reason why in 2009, I challenged the government recommendations and suggested they should change the public health guidelines from the 30 minute per day message to a 10,000 steps per day if they had any chance of really promoting physical activity in the adult population. I propose that setting a step goal of 10,000 would be more significant for most people, allowing them to start towards a target that is linked to meaningful health benefits. Therefore, I did a clinical research study to prove this point, which involved overweight and obese sedentary participants being randomized into two groups. Group one was asked to undertake 30 minutes of walking per day, and this group wore a seal pedometer, so they were unable to use it in any manner, whereas group two was asked to accumulate 10,000 steps per day using their pedometers as a guide, and were able to record their daily steps. 
both groups were given the public health guidelines on how to increase physical activity. As you can see by this graph, both groups started with about 5,000 steps a day at the beginning of the study. But at the end of 12 weeks, the 10,000 step group shown in the dark bars was taking an average of 5,000 steps more than at the start and got closer to 10,000 steps per day. This group almost doubled their steps from the start of the study. Whereas at the end of 12 weeks, the 30 minute group it shown in the clear bar was only taking an average of 2,700 steps per day more from the start of the study and closer to 7,000 steps by the end. This study found that low active overweight women undertook significantly more physical activity when they had a daily 10,000 step goal rather than when they were asked to achieve 30 minutes per day of walking. I really believe that having a quantifiable target like a step goal makes it easier to monitor whether you're walking enough every day. Therefore, I suggested to the government that they change their public health guidelines from their 30 minutes per day message to 10,000 steps per day because it could better promote physical activity in the adult population. In another study in 2009, I wanted to prove that simply telling people to increase their physical activity has no real effect on any measurable lifestyle change, but rather using a tracking device may be a powerful tool to motivate people within themselves to increase their steps. I know the concept seems simple now in 2024, but most people still don't appreciate that self-monitoring can be a strong motivator to cause an automatic behavior change. In this 12-week study, overweight and obese sedentary women were randomized into two groups, a pedometer group and a control group. Participants in the pedometer group were told to record their pedometer steps daily for 12 weeks, but the important thing is that we did not tell them how many steps to take on a daily basis. Those in the control group were sealed pedometer for 12 weeks, so they could not open their pedometer and look at their step count at any point in time. But we in the laboratory could measure their step count. Even though we did not give either group a target for physical activity, we just asked both groups to meet the public health guidelines of 30 minutes a day. If you look at this graph, both groups were doing 76,000 steps at the start of the study. However, those in the pedometer group shown in the gray bar automatically increased their steps to more than 10,000 steps per day, even though we had not given them a target step count. They spontaneously, on their own volition, started walking more when they wore a usable pedometer. In contrast, the group wearing a sealed pedometer, shown in the clear bar, did not change after 12 weeks from the start of the study, even though this group was told to increase their physical activity to comply with the guidelines. So the moral of the story is that it appears that simply telling people to increase physical activity does not seem to work and is definitely not enough of a motivating factor. However, the feedback received from wearing a tracking device that records daily step counts functioned as an automatic prompt and encouraged behavior change by the way of raising one's awareness about their current walking behavior. And this is why when health coaches, doctors, or weight loss programs tell their patients to increase physical activity, these changes either occur momentarily or never happen at all. It's more about using one's own self-monitoring capacity to motivate the increase in physical activity. I want to emphasize that self-monitoring is an underrated strategy for maintaining long-term behavior changes, whether related to physical activity, weight loss, or any other healthy lifestyle change. Research has shown time and time again that in studies which have followed people who have kept their weight off for up to 10 years, found that self-monitoring was a key strategy that played a role in their long-term weight loss success. The other interesting finding of my study is that the increase in steps in the women wearing the pedometer had a flow-on effect on their family members, such as their spouses and their children. This is because women generally have a large input into the well-being of their families. Thus, her lifestyle changes in diet and exercise can have a downstream effect. For example, in our study, when women went for a walk, they would ask their husband or their kids to accompany them on their evening or early morning walk. So the whole family increased their physical activity because of the mother. This also enhanced family connections and social well-being, which shouldn't be underestimated. In contrast, this also highlights the potential impact of sedentary activities on the whole family due to the use of technology such as TV, computers, and cars. These factors contribute to weight gain and poor health for the entire family. 
it is estimated that there are 2.5 billion adults worldwide who are overweight, and at least 890 million of them are obese. Over 390 million children and adolescents, 5 to 19 years, were overweight in 2022, including 160 million who were living with obesity. The World Health Organization estimates that 1.9 million deaths are attributable to physical inactivity. So I just want to emphasize that tracking is a critical factor for self-monitoring. It can subsequently be a huge motivator if you hope to increase your physical activity and maintain it as a long, lifelong habit. Interestingly, even though I conducted these two studies almost 15 years ago, the results are very relevant now, especially with the availability of smartphone watches and tracking devices. I think the problem with doing clinical research is it takes about 10 to 15 years for the results to come into mainstream and be applied to the person on the street. Even though most people are not doing very many steps in their sedentary lives, the key here is to set achievable goals so we can build a sense of accomplishment and a habit that sticks. Physical activity and movement need to become an automatic daily routine, like brushing your teeth or having breakfast. I rely heavily on my smartwatch's step tracker throughout the day for self-monitoring. Without it, I don't think I'd be able to accurately monitor my activity levels and adjust my movements to increase my step count by the end of the day. So please let me know what you'd like to hear next time. I can do a part four of this walking series as there is still so much to cover. This is Dr. Sabali Powell. See you next week. And please don't forget to like and subscribe.